I can't play serious. If I play serious, I don't really have good games. When I have fun, I mean, it's a child's game at the end of the day. I need to have fun. Tie game, going into overtime. I will be smiling and dancing and I'm happy. It's just playing a child's game and giving them my dream. Me personally, I know how to get serious without being serious in the face and getting mad and all that. That's just not who I am. I need to laugh and joke. If I can't laugh and joke, I don't feel comfortable where I'm at. I think it keeps everybody in a good mood. And uh, like sometimes it gets a little too playful, but most of the time it stays light and everybody gets to laugh and joke around and just brings us closer together. I'm a really family-oriented guy, so for me, what led me here is, like, I like to be close to my family. Um, I'm really close with my grandma and my immediate family and my household. Just felt like the right fit. When I was younger, my grandma came down with dementia. Honestly, I didn't know what it meant at the time because I was, I was a little younger. I was around, like, 13, 14. And um, it was just like, well, she doesn't remember me. And that kind of hurt. I was at my grandma's house every day, so it was just like, she can't remember me and it's, it's hard to process that. It kind of pains me a little bit to talk about her sometimes, but in reality, like, she's the reason I get up in the morning. We do have conversations what your why, what your why is, and I know his family's important to him, his younger brothers, obviously his mom, dad, and all that. I mean, that's something I can hang on to and, and, and pull out and every now and then to, to use, you know, just to remind him what his why is. Right to that void and punch and hit it. You know what I mean? So we'll, we'll see that on tape. Other than that, we'll look at the rest and we'll, we'll clean it up, all right? Who's got 1 it? 1% better every day. Get him, Luke. Arsenal on one. One. Arsenal. This biological dad, obviously, was the head basketball coach down, I think, Grand Valley State. He said, you have my permission to coach him as hard as you need to coach him. He said, in fact, he needs that. My stepdad is also a coach, but I kind of kept them separate. Like, I didn't want my mom or dad or stepdad coaching me. You get to look at stuff from a different perspective, other than, like, how all the other players see it. You start seeing it from a coach's perspective pretty early on. Hey, the players know the locker room better than us. And I'm listening to Malik tell me, hey, coach, let me get to him first. You know, or when I'm coming to get some, he said, Coach, I got it, I got it. You know, so that's showing his growth, but it's also showing that he's paying attention. But what it's also telling me is all those times where I was saying something that he may not like, he was still listening. I mean, I can go back 29 years as far as the different people I've coached. I have not had someone do it as well as he's been doing it. My relationship with Coach Gilmore started off a little rocky, but as the years go on, like, we've gotten closer going through things, and now me and Coach Gilmore get each other on a level that I need to be close to my coach. I'm not a coach that's cussing him up and down the field, but I'm going to give you instant feedback, and I don't think he was used to that. Got to work on this one, six. And now that he has worked and put himself in position, I think that has allowed us to, you know, be on the same page, and he see that regardless of how great I am in this. Play fake by Kim Rolls to his left, throws a leaping grand by Malik Carr, touchdown MSU. Regardless if I think I can run this route better than this guy, I'm not gonna reward you because you won't do the other stuff. I'm gonna reward the guys that's doing everything. I respond well when people talk trash to me. So for him, it's like, I know he can't run this route, so I'm gonna give it to somebody else. Just, just to mess with me, stuff like that pushes me to get better. That's my way of getting him to lock in and pay attention to details and, and hey, I'm going to show you, Coach. He is a guy that if you tell you can't do something, he's going to prove you wrong. Oh, I can do it. I think the biggest thing is he has finally embraced that he's a tight end. When he first got here, you know, it was about, you know, he said, Coach, I want to get down to 220 pounds. I'm a, I'm a hybrid, I'm a big wide out. I said, Malik, you won't ever see. 220 pounds again. He's embracing that he's a tight end and he has made tremendous gains in doing that. He has put himself in position to be a complete player. I've had the same dream since I was seven. My grandma is basically my everything. I want her to see me play in the NFL so she can see my dream come true.
and I can take her up there with me and get her the best help possible. Like if I'm having a bad day, first thing I do is think about my grandma, go look in the mirror, just ask what my grandma would want me to do. So yeah, she's everything to me.